Hi, my name is Jake Kallenbach with Burris Optics. I'm the lead design engineer for the Oracle X crossbow scope. We're here in Greeley, Colorado, behind the Burris factory at our archery range, and we're going to show you how to set up and sight in your Burris Optics Oracle X range fighting crossbow scope. First thing you do is take it out of the box. You'll have your scope, your battery and battery cap, a Bluetooth remote that you will mount to the crossbow using either the zip ties or Velcro supplied, and some tools to mount the scope to the crossbow and lock the mount adjustments once you've sighted the scope in at 20 yards. The first step is to install the battery, positive side facing out. Once you have the battery in, you'll want to mount your scope to your crossbow. The mount on the Oracle X fits with both a Weaver and Picatinny style mount. Like any scope, when you mount it, you want to find the right position for a good, comfortable eye relief. So you'll have to adjust the scope forward and back to what fits you best with your setup. If you do find that you need more forward adjustment for better eye relief, um, what you do is remove or loosen the screws on the clamps. Remove the clamps. You have your forward adjustment holes and your rear adjustment holes. So you'll just simply move the clamp to the rear adjustment, which pushes the scope forward, giving you more eye relief options. Once you've found the proper position for your scope for your eye relief, you want to tighten down the two screws on the clamps. While you tighten down the screws, make sure you are pushing the scope forward so the recoil lug is in contact with the mount. We recommend a minimum of 40 inch pounds um, of torque for these screws so they remain stable. Once you've mounted your scope to the crossbow, next you'll want to mount the Bluetooth remote to the crossbow as well. We supply double sided uh, Velcro as well as zip ties. The zip ties can loop through these loops here as well as the loop on here as well. When mounting the remote to your crossbow, Try and find a position where you don't have to move your hand or figure as much, so you can simply just do a small movement to the button. For this particular crossbow, our best option was using the zip ties, mounting it to the handguard here. Now that you have your scope and Bluetooth remote mounted to your crossbow, the next step is to sight in the center crosshair of your scope using the adjustments on the mount here. You do this at 20 yards. We have a target behind me already set up, so let's get started. So now we're going to begin uh, sighting in at 20 yards. It is a good idea to take a shot or two at 10 yards just to make sure you won't miss the target once you step back to 20. We've done that already, so we're ready to shoot, in, to shoot at 20. I'm going to first shoot three arrows uh, with the position right out of the box, and we'll adjust our group from there, or adjust our scope off that group. All right, as you can see with just two, two bolts, we have a very tight group, so we're confident that we, can, we know where we're shooting and we're gonna make our adjustments. We were about two and a half inches high and three inches to the left. So step one is to go ahead and loosen the lock screws in the mounts. There's one there for the windage adjustment and one here for the elevation adjustment. When those are loose, we can then make our adjustments to the windage and elevation. Each tick mark on here represents moving the, the point of impact one quarter of an inch at 20 yards. It's important that after every movement of the mount, you lock down the mount lock screws before you shoot again. Now that I've made my adjustments to the mount and locked the mount adjustments in place, I'll shoot another group of arrows to see where I'm at. So now that we're sighted in at 20 yards, we're going to start the truing process. What you do during the truing process is basically sight the crossbow scope into your setup. It comes with a basic ballistic curve and you're modifying that curve to fit your crossbow and bolt options. The truing process requ requires one additional yardage to be sighted in past your 20 yards. If you're limited in space at your local archery range, you can shoot at 40 yards. The 20 yard and the 40 yard distances will modify your curve and give you an accurate ballistic curve. 
if you have the, the space, you can go back and set up to four different um, truing points. If you're going to shoot uh, 60 yards or less, you can absolutely have an accurate uh, ballistic curve by using two of them at say 30 and 60. If you want to add more and go further back up to 70, 90, whatever you choose, you have four options to do that to get the, the crossbow sighted in as accurate as you would like it to be. For this example today, we're going to pick two distances of 50 yards and 70 yards. So we're going to back up to 50 and start now. Okay, now we're back at 50 yards. You actually don't have to be exactly at 50, but we happen to be right at 50 yards for this, this shot here. First thing to do is to enter the truing menu um, using the buttons on the top of the eyepiece here. First you turn on the scope by pressing the fire button and then hold the fire button and the up button for three seconds to enter the menu screen. You then use the up and down arrows to navigate to the truing menu. Hit right to enter the truing menu. Set range one as your first option. You'll hit right to enter that and then range. Once you hit the fire button to get a range, be presented an aiming pin on the reticle. You'll then use that LED to aim and shoot at your distance. Now we'll shoot two to three bolts at this distance and use the group that we have to adjust our aiming LED based on that group. The arrows hit high of the suggested target, so what we're going to do is chase the arrows and move the pin that we're going to use to aim at 50 yards up. You can do this by two ways. One is just guessing and, and moving the pin up a couple LEDs and to reshoot and then shoot again based off that change. Or you can leave the arrows in the target, put the original aiming pin on the bullseye, and then adjust the LED up to where the new LED is sitting in your arrow group. The old LED that was used to shoot originally will stay flashing. The new one will be a solid LED and give you the, your new aiming point for your next round of shots. So I've shot the, another group of arrows with the new suggested solid pin and the arrows are right on. So I'm going to save that setting now by hitting the right arrow. Done will flash a couple times and then you'll be moved into set range two. You'll repeat that same process we just went through with your next yardage. Completed our SR1 at 50 yards. We've accepted it and we've moved on to SR2. We are back to 70 yards now. We're gonna repeat the steps we did at SR1 to set our SR2 value. When we've accepted SR2, we'll hit right again and we'll be done for the day. To get out of the truing menu, you hit left multiple times to exit the menu screens. It's important when you're ranging with the Oracle X, you use the center of the crosshair, the 20 yard pin, to range your target. You'll be given your suggested pin, which you will then raise up and put the suggested pin on your target to shoot. But now that you've completed your truing at 50 and 70 yards and have backed out of the menu screen with the left arrows, and you're back in normal operation, it's a good idea to go and test your ballistics at various yardages, shoot close, shoot far. If you find that there's some spot that is not as accurate as you would like, use your third or fourth truing point to true at that distance. If you ever want to change your truing point, you can go back in and change any truing point at any time. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please add them to the comments section below or follow the link in the description to the Burris Optics website. Thanks again and please subscribe.